Hey, welcome back to the shop. Uh, today we have worked on something very odd for me. This is the main shaft out of my concrete mixer. And uh, as you can see, it has seen better days. I will show you a photo when I took this apart with the drum and where the shaft goes. And I used it last week to mix up, up about two tons of concrete and I noticed that the drum had a lot of side play in it. It, it's, it was really getting uh, nerve-wracking because the drum was able to, to, to swivel out about 20 to 30 millimeters on its end and that was a bit much for my liking and when I was done I pulled the whole thing apart and I found these um, parts. There were two uh, normal ball bearings in there and as you can see they're <laughs> dirty. Um, both were shielded with metal shields and when I dug around in the grease with a screwdriver I found this. This is the, um, the shield of one of the bearings. Um, it has come off and has uh, been shredded to pieces. And also the bearing. Uh, doesn't sound too good anymore. It has also about 5 tenths um, axle plate. Um, we're going to replace these bearings. They are maybe, maybe five or six bucks a piece, so cheap repair. And then there is the shaft. Um, the front bearing seat looks kind of okay, but the rear bearing seat is worn right away. Um, the shaft has, the bearing seat in front here has about, ooh, <laughs> uh, should be 30 millimeters. It, yeah, slightly undersized. And this one has, uh, has one millimeter undersized. So we're going to machine this down, machine uh, this bearing seat down too, and machine both, uh, uh, weld both of them up. I'm not sure yet if I'm going for stick welding or TIG welding, but uh, I might prefer stick welding because I can put a lot more material in there in a short period of time. So, And then we're going to remachine it, um, put the new bearings into the, into the bearing housing on the concrete mixer, put the shaft in, uh, clean all those accessory parts, there is a spring clip and a, uh, and a smaller clip ring that holds the shaft and the bearings and this holds the bearings in place. Now we'll put it all together and let it run and hope that we can put it back to life. The concrete mixer is um, 1988 and it still says made in western Germany. And still the first motor, still the first belt, which is still looking very good. And uh, yeah, first bearings, but those are shot. They are gone. Uh, we'll replace them and I hope I can get another 28 years of light life out of that concrete mixer. So let's go. So before we go to the milling machine, um, yeah, <laughs> maybe have a look at this. I pulled apart one of the bearings. And as you can see, they are in really bad shape. We got a lot of pitting in there where the balls have just eroded away the material on the raceways, uh, on the ball races. Also on the inner ring of the bearing, this looks quite, <laughs> this really looks quite bad. And also the inner diameter of this bearing looks rather awful. A lot of pitting and surface rust. And this is supposed to be 30 millimeters. And that's one shot bearing. This is completely hopeless. Um, but still, it held up 28 years and, and the concrete mixer was still running. With a lot of side play and a lot of noise, but it was running. So, uh, yeah, let's go to the lathe and see what we can do about this guy. Okay, we're over at the lathe and I have the flange up in the three shot chuck and I'm indicating the 
in quote marks good bearing seat and I have to chuck loose on the back plate and I'm knocking it for the best possible run out which is not very good because the even the better one of the two bearing seats is about 500 of a millimeter out of round as you can see on the dial indicator and this is when I was happy with it 500 of a millimeter this is no precision equipment at all so I'm taking a carbide insert tool and I start to face the end of the shaft because when in doubt put in a center first and that's what I'm doing here center drilling so I can uh, put it back up on the lathe after welding easier I'm going to support the part with a live center just to make the setup a bit safer I'm turning down the outer diameter with a inserted tool, a CCMT0602, which is more of a finishing insert, but that's the only inserts I have. And this is going pretty good. The steel of the shaft seems to be some kind of mild steel, nothing, nothing special. And as the hot chips started burning my hands, I had the brush on top of the insert. Didn't turn this with power feed. And I did only machine down the area of the bearing seats and clean up the area between them. Um, here I'm machining down the rear bearing seat and the face where the bearing rests against. So there we go. That's the shaft I've turning and I also faced a rim on the outside of the flange to have a reference surface later. So now we're over at the bench and I've already done some welding to the shaft, stick welding. I'm using <laughs> pretty old ThyssenKrupp um, stick electrodes and these are igniting very bad. Um, they are well over 20 years old. I, I think I'm, I run, ran out of these electrodes with this job, so um, yeah, I don't even bother to find out why they work <laughs> that bad. When they get up to temperature, they start just fine. Maybe putting them in the oven before welding would help a lot. And I'm just adding material on. The slack, the slack comes off pretty good. Um, after I ran out of the ThyssenKrupp electrodes, I used some early con fin cord electrodes, and those start beautiful. As you can see, one touch and we're good to go. They burn very even and they don't smoke up the whole shop like crazy. Uh, and I just place bead after bead on the diameters where I need material. Okay, you saw me welding up the shaft and then I went to the lathe and turned this diameter back down to, to 31 millimeters so it's still oversized but I wanted to see where I still have material to add. Um, as you might notice, this is the first time I do a weld build up on a shaft and um, it's not as easy as it looks when Keith Fanner or Adam Booth does it. So um, I will take the tick torch and build up those areas individually because with the tick torch I, at least I have more control than with the stick weld. So let's go. So I came back with the TIG welder to fill in the small holes. Um, I didn't feel like uh, doing that with stick welding. Uh, I have way better control with TIG welder and also it's a nicer process. And the shaft at this point looks really ugly. The bad welding the machine down surface and now on top of it the TIG welding 
makes it uh, highly doubtful that the shaft will look good anytime soon. Then I stood the shaft up and I added some material on the end or burned down the corner with the stick welder. Uh, and I'm just going around in circles, adding up material bead after bead. And I think I put considerable heat into the shaft, but I wasn't concerned about warpage too much because I'm machining down the whole diameter anyway. And there's still material missing on the side of the diameter. And there's your cooling down shot. So now we're back at the lathe and I indicated part in and now I'm machining down the welded up material with the same carbide insert that I used before. And it's going pretty good. The, the weld was not too hard, so, um, which is not surprisingly because it's no carbon steel that we welded and the welding rods that I used were also no special material. Also cleaning up the face. And I had to do some polishing with emery cloth. Uh, yeah, surface didn't get get out too nice after turning, so yeah, <laughs> had to do something against it. Here I'm taking the measurement of the bearing diameter, and I'm pretty much dead nuts on 30 millimeters, that's a hair under, and that's perfectly fine. So I cleaned up the shaft with some emery cloth and I faced off the end. I cleaned out the, the center and both bearing seats are to size. The center is relieved. Um, I have some minor spots where the weld buildup didn't go that good. Uh, here, 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 here and everywhere else. Um, but shouldn't matter, it's just a concrete mixer. Um, Last thing to do is to put in the, the groove for the snap ring that holds everything in the uh, everything together, yeah. So then we're pretty much done. Okay, now we take a carbide grooving tool. These are specially made for snap ring grooves and stuff like that. And we're just plunging in to cut the groove with the aid of some cutting oil. And I didn't have a tool of the right width, so I had to do um, two cuts next to each other to get to the right width. And I'm taking a triangular file, to creating a slight chamfer on the edge of the groove and remove the secondary burr that's thrown up by the file with some emery cloth. And I flipped the part around in a chuck and I clamped on the new diameter and I gave the face of the flange a very light cut. First of all, because it didn't um, match up perfectly and it also warped slightly due to welding. Okay, I got the weld build up done. It's all machined back to the right diameter. And I faced off this side slightly. I left a slight uh, witness mark here, so I didn't remove a lot of material. Only about one or two tenths of a millimeter, and that's the amount of warp between the shaft and the flange. I don't worry too much about of this surface going back to tenth of a millimeter because everything on the concrete mixer is pretty rough. So the two tenth millimeter difference in distance to the pinion won't matter. Okay, now we're outside on the concrete mixer and you can see the swing frame with the bearing seats. 
And we have to clean the bearing seats before we do any work to them uh, using a rag and some solvent. And now we are about to put in the rear bearing. I machined a round Delrin piece so I can hammer onto the bearing without damaging it and um, only hammering on the outer ring of the bearing, not on the inner ring. Went in perfectly fine. The front bearing is already mounted onto the shaft and it will get pressed into the housing or hammered into the housing right now. Here we can see the bearing on directly behind the flange and now it goes into the bearing seat and it will take some percussive aid with the hammer but now but no heavy hammering just swing it down and knock it you see it goes in very easy turns very, very easy and of course we have to check the run out of this flange the axial run out and that's about uh, five hundredths of a millimeter it's important to check your concrete mixer really Now we will get the drum back on. This is work you can do easily by yourself. Don't need a second person. Just be careful, wear a hard hat and steel toed boots, safety glasses, gloves. And then um, you can do this pretty easy on yourself without any danger of hurting yourself. The rear bearing cap, which just keeps out the crap. Uh, it is, it's held in place with a, a spring ring. And I'm just uh, yeah, hammering into place. So that's the drum back in place. And as you can see, there is not much wiggle in it. It doesn't, it's. Before it was rattling around like crazy, but now it's perfectly fine. Okay, of course we have also to check the runout of the drum itself. Here I'm setting up the dial indicator and checking the travel. And about to turn the drum. Thank you for watching.